Well, good morning, everybody. Glad to be here with you again today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we do rejoice and we are glad in it. I want to thank you guys for being out here with us this morning, uh, for joining us online. Obviously, we're still in the, um, the consideration of what the government has said with not uh, being in large gatherings. And so thank you for gathering together with us right there in your home. We encourage you to get your teenagers, get your, uh, your children, gather them together. You know, the church was born in the home. You know, they started in Acts chapter 2, breaking bread and fellowshipping from house to house. And here we are 2,000 years later, and we're in the home, you know, worshiping God right here with one another in the name of Jesus. So wherever you are, wherever you may be watching, I want you to lean in and lock in. God's got something good for you today. We've got some amazing testimonies, some victory stories that we're going to share that are particularly as it relates to employment or financial miracles. And so right now, there should be a number at the bottom of your screen. We want you to text us your prayer request. If you're in the need of a miracle on the job, if you're in the need of a financial miracle to show up in the short period of time, I'm not talking about waiting on the government. If you need God to show up big in your finances, please text us at 713-903-8533 and we will be glad throughout this week and the upcoming weeks to take your request before the throne of God. We believe that God hears our prayers. We believe that God answers our prayers. If you want to join us on one of those prayer conference calls, come on out on Tuesday at, 7, at 6 a.m. on Facebook or, or the prayer conference call line or at 6 o'clock p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have an hour of prayer and it's an hour of power. But we're getting ready to go, and go before God. I want you to get your praise on. I want you to lock in, lean into these songs and worship God right where you are. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your praise. Don't let the devil silence you. Let's bless him today in Jesus name. Church, I'm one of the executive assistant pastors and uh, God has given me a word for us to share today. Uh, Pastor Stan, Sister Marquita are actually celebrating um, their anniversary. And so, you know, why take off selling an, celebrating an anniversary for something like this? There's no need for it. But uh, so they're out doing that to enjoy this time. So we're here. God has given me a word for us to share and for us to look at. I believe that we're going to grow today. That God is going to give us more and more of what we need so that we can uh, do what God has for us to do in this time. And, and we're going to look at some things that are going on right now and how we can respond to that. And again, to find out what God has for us to do. So we're glad you're here, glad that you're listening. Stay hooked up. God will deliver the word to us wherever we are and whenever it is that we're listening to it. Also, when we get into the word, I'm going to go a little bit fast because I only have a little bit of time. I feel like God gave me a whole lot to say. And so the good thing about having it on video is that you can go back, watch it later. You can pause it. You can rewind it. You can slow it down and have speed if you need to. But I'm going to put it in 2x. All right. So we're just going to pray and we're going to get into the word for today. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. We thank you that even though much in our world right now is shut down and being changed, uh, that we don't have to stop our worshiping you, that we don't even have to stop our gathering and the assembling of ourselves together. We're doing it today in a different format than we normally do, but we thank you as we've heard plenty of times throughout the years that there is no distance in the spirit. And so we thank you, Lord, that we're able to use technology and these things that we have today for our advantage to lift you up, to make your name great, and so that we can continue to grow in our relationship with you. I pray that you continue to deliver the message that you have through me, Lord, that you would give me the words that you have to be uh, shared, that you would, through the Holy Spirit, take the word that's being shared and make sure that we have what we need, that we can grow in understanding, and that we also will have ears to hear and eyes to see what you're delivering to us. And we pray that through the Holy Spirit uh, that you will help us be good ground, that we will take this word, understand it, do it, live it, and produce a great, great harvest in your name. We give you all the glory and honor and the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So what I want to talk to us and me and you today about is the church in crisis. And I want to look at how 
the church is to operate in crisis. Uh, so if you go back to school, we have to put the punctuation in the correct uh, places because I'm not saying that today the church is in a crisis or that there's some type of crisis going on throughout the church. But what I want to focus on is how the church acts or responds or handles itself within a crisis. So right now we're dealing with this uh, so-called doom and gloom worldwide pandemic of the COVID-19 uh, Chinese flu or whatever it is that you want to call it. And so because of that, lots and lots of things have been going on and lots of things are different than they've ever been done before. Right. And so we've had these issues before. We've had a uh, uh, disease and pestilence and things like that come and that we've had to deal with before. But the way we're dealing with it right now is different than we've ever done before. So down here in Houston, not too long ago, we had this phenomenon called Hurricane Harvey. And that was like the worst natural type of disaster or anything that I've ever dealt with or been through. Um, and there were actual things that were going on that caused the difficulties, right? There was water everywhere. There was flooding and all these things. And so you could see why it was difficult to get to the grocery store. You could see why they shut down school because you just couldn't get there. Um, and this almost makes me wish it was it was Hurricane Harvey. I'd almost rather go back to Hurricane Harvey than dealing with this COVID-19 because, you know, it's just crazy. So what I want to look at, uh, though, is, is that how the world is in this crisis right now. We're dealing with crisis. We have crisis stuff going on all around us. We have uh, the inside of restaurants are shut down. Um, if it's not a fast food restaurant, most of those restaurants are, are teetering on, completely closing. Lots of waiters and people have, have lost their jobs uh, in the temporary because the restaurants are, clo are closed. When we go to the grocery store, there's a whole bunch of the shelves that are empty. We're making run on food like there's no tomorrow and, and we don't know what's going on. And, you know, we had the, the toilet paper scare because everybody went to buy toilet paper as if the toilet paper factories had gotten blown up and there wasn't going to be any more Charmin to make your hiney clean. And so we went to get all that. There's a run on guns and ammo. A lot of the online places that I go are, are out of a lot of the ammo that they normally have. People are buying guns like crazy and, uh, you know, I'm all for guns and ammo, no doubt. But a lot of things that are going on are going on simply because of fear. There's fear that's hit the world and hit our culture in a way that maybe hasn't happened in a really long time, uh, if ever, in my lifetime. And so we're dealing with the effects of fear. And when people, when we become afraid, we do things that we wouldn't otherwise do. Um, they tell us that, you know, when when the craziness happens, when there's a really big storm or outbreak or thing that happens, um, when services get shut down, that you really only have about three days before people just start to break down and go, I guess, caveman and just really get crazy, you know, robbing each other and, and just doing whatever it is, you know, I guess our primal instincts would start to kick in after just three days. And, uh, and that's because of fear. And so what I want to look at is how uh, we don't want to allow fear to cause us to behave in a way that we're not supposed to behave. And then we will end up, if we, if we go the direction of fear, if we do what Satan wants us to do because of fear, then we will go right, fall right into the trap, we'll fall right into his hands, and all the things that we fear that weren't going to happen would definitely happen because of our actions. So I don't want us to walk into a trap. Don't want us to have to deal with uh, what Satan is. Most people is not that big of a deal, right? If you have underlying health issues, everything is a bigger deal to you than normal anyway because of underlying health issues. If you don't have those issues, it's, it's, you know, nobody wants to go through a cold or a sickness or something like that. Um, but we're not dealing with the bubonic plague or the Spanish flu or something that wiped out, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of people back in the day. So if we look at what's, what's really going on, you know, there's not really a good reason for us to 
hoard many of the things that we're hoarding. It's not really a good reason for us to take, I don't know, just many of the steps that we're taking, but particularly for the church. The church in a crisis has a role to play, a job to do, and a responsibility to take care of. And that's what I want to look at today. Um, fear, last time I, I spoke at Faith Family Church, I was talking about fear and we were dealing with fear. Um, and fear is a terrible thing. Satan is able to use fear in the same way that God is able to use faith. And so if, if you're a new believer... What I mean by that is that the Bible teaches us that, that God acts on faith. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And faith is the thing that causes uh, what the believer needs from God in heaven to show up in the believer's life on earth. Okay, There's like an a, a invisible faith train. And when we have faith, we're able to get from God what he promises us, what we need. He can deliver that to us through faith. Well, the reverse works with fear. When we are in fear, when a person is in fear, whether they believe in God or not, they have a train that's opened up between them and Satan. And now they are being confident that Satan will be able to do what it is that he wants to do. When we had fear, when something was wrong, when we were younger, we were afraid that, you know, the boogeyman was going to come out. There was no boogeyman. But one of the things that the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4 is that fear has torment. So even if the end of the fear is not met, even if the boogeyman doesn't come out, all right, even if the monsters don't come from under the bed or from in the closet or, or, or the, the socks that you left out. You know, I remember once I had a, a bad dream and I left my clothes out, I was disobedient and you know, I, I got up and I wanted to get out of the bed, but I saw my socks on the floor and I thought they were snakes. And I thought if I got out of bed to go run to my parents, the snakes was going to get me. And even if the fear isn't completely realized, the fear still has torment between the time that you accept that fear and the time that you get rid of that fear. So fear is a very, very bad thing because it makes more likely the bad thing that we don't want to happen. And it also brings with it torment in the meanwhile. So while we're dealing with this crisis, we want to look at what should be going on with the church. What should the church be doing? Also, if you're new uh, to the faith, what we found out as we read the word when we were new in the faith is that the church is not the church building, right? The reason we're doing this right now uh, is because of different things that are going on in the world a lot. We're not supposed to have meetings that are more than 10 people. Um, we meet actually in a school right now. And so that school was shut down and they said, hey, your meeting is shut down. And we said, hey, OK, we don't like it, but we don't really have a choice because it's not our building. And so uh, the church is not the building. The church hasn't been the building since Jesus went to the cross because Jesus went to the cross. And because now God lives in us, I'm the church and you're the church. And so when I'm talking about what the church should be doing in crisis, I'm talking about what you should be doing, what I should be doing, because we are the church, because God is living on the inside of us. Yeah. So we have to learn how to deal with fear, how to deal with this stuff. You know, with all this stuff going on, you're still more likely to die in a car accident. Yeah. You're still more likely to get into a car accident before before getting this disease. Uh, you know, we want to wear the gloves and masks when we go to the store and stuff like that. But what happens when you get home and you take the stuff out of the bag? Well, the COVID-19 can live on cardboard for at least six hours. So if there was somebody that was stocking your groceries and they had it and they touched, you know, your Captain Crunch and you wore gloves so that you wouldn't touch the dirty people at the store. But you got hungry and you went to grab your, your Captain Crunch. Well, you could contract the disease. <gasps> oh, my goodness. So while all these things are helping to kind of limit, there's really no running and hiding. You know, unless we're going to go out in the woods, have no physical contact, that we're going to be six feet away from everybody until they, you know, sound the all clear alarm, there's a chance. But you know what? There's always been a chance that we were going to catch some kind of disease. Have you been to a park lately? Have you seen children lately? I don't know about you, but I see little kids all the time. And man, they're disgusting, right? 
They have no idea what cross contamination is. They, they have no idea why it's not okay for them to lick their hands and then touch you, right? They don't know why they shouldn't pull the gum off the thing at the, at the park, you know? They, they don't know about that. And so there's germs all over the place. And so what I'm trying to say is don't have a crazy fear of regular life. You know, there are always things that are going on that could try to get us or cause problems in our lives. And so whether it's COVID-19 and and dealing with this pseudo quarantine or regular everyday life, we're still supposed to live the life that we're supposed to live. We're still supposed to do what we're supposed to do. And so the things that we should be doing really aren't any different in this time than they are in any other time. So I want to look at a whole bunch of scriptures uh, because that's what I like to do. I like to see what the scripture says over what I say because the scriptures always say better stuff than I say. So I want to start in uh, so that we can go comfort other people who are in trouble with the same comfort that we have. Heard about this girl that was in a grocery store uh, almost having like some kind of panic or anxiety attack because she needed to go in the store to get some stuff, but she didn't have any PPE, right? She didn't have any personal protective equipment. And she still had to go in the store, but she was fretting and worried and crying on the outside of the store because she thought, you know, man, there's a really good chance I'm going to get something if I go in there and get uh, what I need to get. Well, when we see that, when we hear people talking about how stressed they are and how bad things are, we should be comforted, number one. And when we are comforted, we can go comfort others. We don't want to spread the fear. We don't want to stoke the fire. You know, when we we just got back from camp. Yes, we went to camp in the middle of COVID-19 and and, you know, washed our hands a little bit more than normal. But we were still camping. We were out there and and um, and there's just, you know, all kind of stuff that's going on. Um, when God can comfort us, then we can comfort that other person. So we don't have to worry about the things that are really going on around us because we're to be comforted by God, God Almighty. So we do our job. We uh, play our role. We go through what we're supposed to go through so that God can comfort us and, and, and then we can pass it on. So when we're at camp, one of the things that we do is gather around the fire. You know, you gather around the fire, you might throw a stick in the fire. When the fire gets low, you stoke it, you put another log on the fire. Um, and, and so that fire can become bigger, so it'll give heat or just give whatever that enjoyment is that you find when you look and stand around fire, right? There's just something about fire, and I'm not a pyromaniac in any way. In the same way, we don't want to get around our friends and stoke fear and panic. Oh, you know, you know, I keep hearing and, and the mayor was, was trying to calm people down. You know, I called somebody at the stores the other day. Oh, you know, I, I heard from somebody that knows that, you know, they're going to shut the city down. We're going to they're going to shut us down for a couple weeks. So we're probably not going to be able to do what you're asking to do. And, and, and then we start to feel it. Yeah, you know, I heard that, too. It must be true. And then we just start stoking and the, the fire of our fear gets bigger and bigger. We left the house unafraid, but now for some reason we're a little bit worried and concerned. Now we're a little bit, you know, uh, afraid of what might happen because we started hanging around that fire and we started putting some stuff into that fire so it can grow. So I want to look at what, again, we're supposed to be doing as the church. want to head over to Matthew chapter 5. We're going to look at verse number 13. Matthew chapter 5, I want to look briefly at verse number 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. Okay? But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? So if we pause right there, God through his word is telling us that we are the salt of the rest of the world. The rest of the world is salt free. Okay? We bring the flavor. We bring the preservative attributes of salt. Back in the day, you know, you might have heard the saying uh, that, that a man, you know, that guy's not worth his salt. Long, long time ago, they used to pay people in salt or they would give them salt. And then you take the salt home, you could rub it on your food. It would cause your food to be preserved before the frigidaires and all that came out. And so you would get paid a daily wage. Part of your wage would be paid in salt. They say, oh, he's not worth his salt. If we're the salt of the world, 
if the church is taken out of the world or if the church is in the world but not being salty, the rest of the world will not be preserved. All right. So if we withdraw, if we hunker down, if we deal with our four and no more, the rest of the world has no hope. We're supposed to be standing in the gap to give them enough time to repent and be saved and be baptized. But if we withdraw, they have no hope. This hope we have is our hope. And it's only going to be given to anyone that we share it with. If we don't share it, they don't have hope. So we're supposed to be preserving the world, not poisoning the world. We are our salt. We're not supposed to become pepper. Right. Sometimes, you know, if, if, we, if we say the world is pepper and the Bible doesn't say that, I'm just using an example. So don't start getting on the feed talking about nothing crazy. But I'm just saying if, if since we're salt, then the world might be pepper. But we're not supposed to get around the world and start becoming pepper. We're supposed to be salt. How would the 80s or 90s have been if salt and pepper were the same? We needed salt and pepper. I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. So we're supposed to be the salt so we can preserve. Let's look over at 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Salt and pepper is not here. We're just preaching the word. It's just the salt. The salt is here. Salt, salt, salt is here. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verse number, I want to look at verse number 13. What are you supposed to be doing, church? says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Everybody say the faith. faith. Then it says, quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done in charity. God just told us to man up. Women, feminists, don't get all upset. It's just a saying. Women can man up too. I'll be equal opportunity on that. But the Bible says that we're supposed to man up. We're supposed to be strong. We're supposed to stand in faith and be strong. We can't be running around like punks, scared that the sky is going to fall and everybody's going to get COVID-19 and nobody's going to have a job or any money. And oh, it's just over. It's just over. Forget it. You know, turn all this stuff off. Go down with the ship. There is no hope. We're all going to die. But that's not what we're supposed to be doing, especially not as believers. We need to slap that man and tell him to come out of it and stop acting like that. And then it says, let all your things be done with charity. We don't need to go to the grocery store, fight nobody over a bottle of water. The dang tap water still works. The reason you need a bunch of bottled water is when the water is messed up. But the water is not messed up. It's not that good. It doesn't taste that great down here. But you can still drink it and not die. I mean, would you rather die from bad water or the COVID-19? Take your pick. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, I want to look down three things that we need to do. I want us to stay in faith. I want us to bind Satan and I want us to give hope. All right. So if you're writing notes, those are the three, the three points that we can take away. You can take away as many points as you want, but those are the three that I'm going to highlight and say that those are points. So the first one, we need to stay in faith. Bible tells us that we're supposed to fight the good fight of faith. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, we're supposed to fight the fight of faith. Okay, if we could stay in faith without fighting, he wouldn't have said we have to fight the fight of faith. So that means in order for us to stay in faith, we do have to fight. What do you have to fight? You have to fight all those thoughts that say, oh my goodness, don't go over there. That might be COVID-19 over there. We have to fight all those thoughts and things where the news is saying, oh, it's, it's bad. We breaking news on the spread of the COVID-19 virus. You know, all this stuff is going on around us. We have to fight to stay in faith. And that's what God wants us to do. So we'll stay in faith. We will fight that fight. We won't give up. And I want to give you some reasons not to give up and some things to help you in that fight. So if we look at Psalm number 103. Want to go over there? Psalm number 103. We want to stay in faith. We want to continue to believe that what the word tells us is true. And that no matter what goes on around the rest of the world, we don't have to worry about it. You know, if you look back at some of the movies, they do a great job of of putting in visual form the stories that we might read from the Bible. And uh, and if you look, I think it was the last uh, movie about the 
the Children of Israelites. I know Christian Bale was in it. I don't remember the name of the movie. I don't even know if I saw all of it. But I remember the one time they showed when there was darkness in Egypt and they showed light in Goshen. Okay, the God's city where God's people were, everything was fine. When they started hearing the cries from all the firstborn dying, that didn't happen with God's people. So no matter what's going on in your neighborhood, in your city, God has got you as long as you stay in faith and let him do what he needs to do. All right, Psalm number 103, looking at stanza two, says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Somebody say benefits. benefits. Forget not all his benefits. It says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. It doesn't matter what is going on in the world. God is here to forgive our iniquities and equally heal our diseases. Jesus Christ went to the cross for our sins and for our sickness. He's not going to deliver us from our sin, but make us stay sick if we were to get sick. So uh, even if we did catch something, God is our healer. I want to look at James chapter five right quick because the clock is running. James five going to look at verse number 15 says the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And, he, and if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Again, sins and sicknesses are together mentioned because God is taking care of those too. We don't have to worry about running out of beds at the hospital if we start praying for people and keeping them from needing to go to the hospital. We don't need more ventilators. We need more people of faith to lay hands on the sick and to see them recover. We don't need more hospital beds. You only need more hospital beds when you're planning for more sick people. And I'm not planning for more sick people. And you and your unbelieving self might say, oh, that's just ridiculous. Oh, that's not, you know, that's just not normal. That's just not right. Well, we're going to pray for you, too, in the name of Jesus. Want to look at Psalm number 91. Run over there. I only got you right now. I don't know if I'll ever be able to talk to you again. So let me give you what I got. Psalm number 91. Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, not they will say of the Lord, not pastor will say of the Lord, not my mama will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I'm not trusting in what the county commissioners are doing. I'm not trusting in what the president is doing. I'm not trusting in what anybody is doing. My trust is in God, and I hope yours would be too. It says, surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, that's the trap, and from the noise and pestilence. That word pestilence means disease. God will deliver us away from disease. He'll cover us with his feathers. Under his wings shall we trust. His truth will be our shield and buckler. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness. That means nor the germs that are invisible that we can't see. The president called it uh, an invisible enemy because it's a disease. Well, the Bible says that we don't have to fear. We don't have to be afraid of the pestilence that walketh in darkness. We can stand in faith and allow God to do what he wants to do. I want to write down for your notes for time's sake. I want you to go look at Exodus chapter uh, 23, verse number 25. And there we'll see that God wants to bless our bread and our water. And he wants to take sickness away from the midst of us. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Or excuse me, Proverbs. Yeah, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. Tell us about how uh, if we will allow God's word to, to be in us and in our minds, that that will be health to our flesh. One of the, the biggest, best ways that you can fight the COVID-19 is to have a strong immune system. The people that are really negatively affected by COVID-19 have something wrong with their immune system. And so if we would uh, do more to build up our immune system, that'll do more than anything that we can do to fight off germs because that's what we have to do all day, every day, whether COVID is a thing or not. We need immune system to get that stuff out of there. So we stay in faith and we do what God has for us to do. And then we can do the practical, which is take care of our immunity or our immune system. So the second thing on my list was that we need to bind Satan. All right. So in Matthew chapter 16, 
verse number 19 in particular, Jesus said that he was going to give us the keys to the kingdom. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, which means whatever you allow, I'm going to allow it. God will allow you to go straight to hell, even though he doesn't want it. If that's your choice, he'll let you choose that choice. He'll back it up and he won't overthrow what you decided to do. But he doesn't want us to do that. So if we, the church, will begin to bind this sickness and disease, if we, the church, will get together and cause our faith to be in action, COVID-19 will have to cease spreading. It will not be able to continue to go and do what it wants to do if we use the authority and the keys that God has given us. And that's on you and that's on me. That's what we need to do. So if we fear the virus, we can't stop the virus. So when we shed that fear, when we cast that fear and we bind it from operating and spreading and causing all this havoc in our community, it will have to stop in Jesus name. Last thing I want to give you before I get out of here is that we are to give hope. Dealing uh, in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, one of those Beatitudes is blessed are the peacemakers. We are to be peacemakers. So when others are frantic and crazy and tripping and, and doing all kind of stuff, we're supposed to be making peace, okay? Don't go back to your Medea videos and, and talking about your peacemaker being a weapon, you know, yes, that can make peace when we need it, but we, we have other peace that can be made. We as the children of God are supposed to make peace, which is to calm the crazy, calm the nonsense and say, no, we will have peace. We will give peace. The way that we can make peace is to give hope. First uh, Peter chapter 315 says that we should be ready with an answer for our hope. OK, so when others are asking, well, why are you so calm? What's, why aren't you worried? Why aren't you gloved up, masked up? You can get it in your eyeballs. You should be wearing glasses, too. You should be wearing full goggles to not let the covid get through your eyeballs. But we should be ready to have a reason for our hope. I want you to read Psalm chapter one, particularly verses stanzas one through six, when it talks about how we will be blessed if we stay away from the nonsense, stay away from those that are causing uh, causing the fear, stoking the fear and get into what God has for us to get into. Yeah. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Look at that. Talking about the God and hope. And then Romans 12, 12 tells us that we can rejoice in hope. So Romans 15, 13, the God of hope is our God. His hope will be in us. Romans 12, 12 will rejoice. I give you being Jesus, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. That's to give it and take it back. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. As we close, as we uh, end this time, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be afraid. Allow God's peace to stay with you, to be with you, and to guard you and to guard your heart and to cover your actions in Jesus' name. That's all the time I have with you. I want to encourage you to continue uh, to steadfast, to pray, to spend your time um, getting God's word in you. Can continue to go over the scripture, especially if you're off work. If you're off work and you ain't got nothing to do, uh, read the Bible and confess the word in the name of Jesus. So what we want to do right now, we're going to have our uh, sister Angela's over our children's ministry. She's going to come up and share the word for some of our kids. So if you have kids, particularly from the fifth grade and lower. Now is the time to make them sit down and get some word. And then after that, I'll be coming with a short little bit more for our youth from uh, grades, sixth grade to 12th grade. Let's give it up for Sister Angela. Amen. Good morning, everyone. That's live on Facebook. All right, children, we should see you there watching on Facebook. Parents, get your children together. They should already be there. Thank you, Faith Kids. Thank you, Faith Pre-Tees, for being a part of Children Ministry on today. Again, as we always start with our focus, let's say our things. Kids, let's say it together. You're accepted just as you are. We respect each other's thoughts. We are all in this together. God is here. He is your friend because you matter. 
All right, faith kids, we know that we matter to God. You matter. No matter what age you are, you matter to God. So let's pray. Father, we come just to thank you for this time to share in your word. We thank you, God, as your children are listening, Father, that they're able to hear you. They're able to know you. They're able to experience you on a greater level, God. We thank you that the word that you have for them today, Father God, will be a word of encouragement, a word that they can grow and learn of you, O Heavenly Father, that they will draw nigh to you and you will draw nigh to them. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, today our topic is going to be, can I talk to God? And I know you know the answer, right? Let me hear it out loud, parents. What are your children saying? Yes, we can talk to God. So before we begin, kids, as you have your Bibles, you have your phones, you have your tablets, I know you have them, turn in your Bible to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 6. Use your parents, because they just had theirs, so I know you can use theirs. And while you're turning to Philippians chapter 6, I'm going to talk about an invitation, so do you, uh, when you're invited to birthday parties or, you know, any special events, whether it's a wedding or something, I know you get an invitation from your little friends to come to the party, right? So, all right, when you get that invitation, you, it says on there, you know, get you the time and the date and, you know, what's going on, whatever the celebration is. So I want to talk to you about an invitation that God has given each and every one of you. And here's my little invitation. If you can see it, it says, you're invited. And it says, to, I didn't put anything on there. I was going to put all, but I wanted to make it personal because sometimes when we say all, we don't really conclude ourselves in all. We know it means me, but sometimes, you know, just to make it a little more personal to you so you can say, you're invited, and then put your name to your name. And it is from God. So he is inviting you. And what has he invited you to do? He is inviting you to pray for a prayer time. God has given you an invitation to have prayer. It says here, invited prayer time. And God says, let's talk. He wants to talk to you. And when is this party. As we know, when you go to a celebration, we have a time for the party and where it's going to be and and all of those specifics. So God says the time is anytime. You can talk, you can pray to him anytime. Then it says the date every day. Every day. day. Kids, when can we talk? Every Every day. So your invitation to talk to God, to pray is every day. And then also, your place. It's any place. You can talk. You can come to him anywhere. You can be in your bed. You can be in the restroom. You can be at school. You can be on the playground. You can be in the shower, as someone is saying here. Wherever, any place, it's a place that you can talk to God. So you are invited to prayer time with God. You're never too young to have a prayer time with God. So that's our focus on today, talking to God. So I know you had our scripture in Philippians 4 and verse 6, and it says, don't worry about anything. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. So as we've been in... uh, Youth ministry and children's ministry, I know a lot of you, you say, I don't know how to pray, and I don't know what to pray. So that's why we're going through here, and we're covering this now, because we want you to know that God wants to talk to you, and he wants you to talk to him. And it's not about what you say to him, it's just talking to him. Again, just like we talk to our friends, I know you talk to your friends, you've been talking to them all week long. You've been on the phone However, y'all talking to them on the phone, Instagram, uh, you know, I think the young folks don't hardly use Facebook no more. They say the older people are on it. So I know y'all got whatever those other little websites are, they're talking to y'all friends. So just like you talk to them about everything, 
God wants you to talk to him about everything. So don't say, I don't know what to say, and I don't know how to talk, and what do I say? What do you talk to your friends about? Whether you're happy, oh, I'm excited about this, and we're going here, and I'm going to do this, and my mom said I can do this, and I got this, and I'm going to the mall. Well, you can say, God, God, you bless my mom. She said I can go to the mall. You can talk to him about everything. You got a question? You can talk to God about it. So we're going to look at some people in the Bible who was talking, who talked to God, so kind of give you some ideas on things you can talk to God about, just like you talk to your friends, right? So we're going to look at Daniel chapter 9. You can turn there if you want. I'm probably going to go through it pretty quick, but Daniel chapter 9. This is someone who talked to God, and let's see what he had to say when he talked to God. And I'm going to turn there as you're turning there. You may get there before me. <laughs> All right. And where I'm going. All right, in Daniel chapter 9. We're going to read verse 4. It says, I prayed to the Lord. This is Daniel. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, O oh Lord, you are great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promise of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commandments. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your your commandments and regulations. So Daniel, the first thing he did was he was praising and worshiping God. So when you're talking to God, you can just thank him for whatever. Lord, I just thank you that I'm here. Lord, I thank you for my parents, as we've always been telling you. I thank you that I am COVID-19 free. You can tell him, thank him for everything. Thank him for the sun. Thank him for the moon. Thank him for the grass, the trees, the flowers. Thank him I can breathe. Thank you that I have my home. Thank you I have my iPhone. Thank you I have my iPad. Whatever. You can thank him for all of those things. So you can go into him talking to him. Lord, I just thank you for all of these things that you've done. And even all of that, there's so much more that you can thank him for. So Daniel started by thanking him. And then he went in to say, well, God, you know, we, we've been doing wrong. So, you know, maybe you was disobedient to your parents. I didn't clean up, you know, like our mom told me, clean up before I come back home. And we didn't do it. You know, we wait to the last minute, right, guys? I know. So you said, oh, Lord, you know, I did not clean up like my mama told me to clean up. You can talk to him about that. Father, please help me be more obedient. You can tell him that. Well, I need help in. Father, you know I don't listen to my teacher at school sometimes. Can you just please help me to listen to my teacher, do what they ask me to do? Those things, you can talk to God. He wants to talk to you. Something, it may seem little to you, but it's okay. He wants to hear you. He wants to talk to you. It doesn't matter how big or how little you think it may be or not, or it's not. He says, just talk to me. And I want to talk to you. So let's look at uh, 1 Kings. We're going to go to chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3. Because we want to give you some ideas and show you in the Bible when people pray and what they're saying when they pray. So you can't say, I don't know what to pray about. We just know. We can thank him for everything, right? And then we can tell him, you know, what I did wrong or how I messed up or I should have did or what should I have done. You can even ask him, well, I did this. Was that the right thing to do, Lord? Was that the right way to do it? He'll let you know. So in 1 Kings chapter 3, First, we're going to look at verse 5, and then I'm going to jump down to 7. We're talking about Solomon here. In verse 5, it says, The night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream, and God said, remember I said God wants to talk to you. God said, what do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. So here in verse 5, God t was talking to Solomon. So God wants to talk to you. In this manner, he was talking to Solomon through a dream. So even when you're sleeping, the word tells us that we're to keep our minds stayed upon him. So even when we're sleeping, excuse me, our minds are upon him. So he's able to even speak to you in your dreams, just like he did Solomon. He says, Solomon, 
what do you want? God will talk to you. He will ask you, what do you want? And Solomon replied, later, go down to verse 7. He said, now, O Lord, my God, you have made me king instead of my father, his father David, but I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous, they cannot be counted. So Solomon's like, I, you can put me in charge of all these people, and I don't know what to do. So give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong for who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours. So in this scripture, just as Solomon was over all these people and like the president, that's why we pray for our people that are over us, the people in authority. That's another thing you can pray for, those people over you, the president, your teachers, everyone, because you want those people who are over you to be governing you the right way. You don't want them over you and not making the right decisions. So you pray for your teachers and the principals, and you pray for our presidents. That's why we pray for these people who are over us so that when they're making decisions, like in these times of crisis, when they make the right decisions. So that's what Solomon was praying for. He said, Lord, help me. You've given me this title. You put me over these people that I'm to govern them. Help me to make it right choices. Help me not do the right wrong thing. Help me to do it the right way. So when you're talking to God, you can pray those things. Help me, Lord, to make the right decisions. When I'm at school and my friends are doing this and they're doing that, help me to make the right decisions. Should I do that or should not I do that? When you see friends who are bullying other friends, make the right decision. You don't have to. And then you can also turn them and say, you know, that is not the right thing to do. So those are things that we can talk to God about. So Daniel said, please, I mean, Solomon said, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. That's what he was praying for, wisdom. So we can ask God for wisdom. When you don't know what to do, you can ask God for wisdom. He wants to talk to you. He wants to tell you what is the right thing to do. So it doesn't matter if fake kids pre -tease. Ask God, talk to him about whatever you need for him to talk about. So as I'm wrapping up, I want you to, the word talk. I wrote the word talk, T-A-L-K. So in T means that when we're talking to God, it's when we're having time, it means take the time. When we want to talk to God, we need to take the time. So you should be setting a time to talk to God. When you get up in the morning, it's like brushing your teeth. You know, when I get up, that's the first thing I'm going to do, talk to God. So you know you get up and brush your teeth. Go to the restroom because mama already done told you. When you wake up, brush your teeth. Go brush your teeth. Wipe your face. Don't come out here. Don't even come to my table. And you ain't cleaned up, right? So when you wake up in the morning, you should be talking to God. Talking. So T is for talking to God. It, it doesn't matter how long you talk. He just wants you to talk. I know you don't get up in the morning and don't speak to your parents. Kids, I'm looking. When you wake up, I know you say, hey, mom, hey, dad, you know, good morning. Well, you do the same thing for the Lord. Wake, when you wake up, say, hey, God, thank you. I'm, you woke me up this morning. Hello. Just say hello. Good morning. That is the great thing you can, that's a way of talking to God, saying hello, good morning. And then in the word talk, you have the word A, and it means always quiet. You should always have a time that you set aside specifically that you're going to talk to God. Yes, we get up in the morning and, we, you know, we're talking, but you should have a time that says, okay, I'm not going to be on the phone. I'm not listening to my music. I'm not on the tablet. I'm not on the game. But I got this little time that I'm setting aside, God, just for you. So you should have a quiet time that you set aside just for God. And then L means you're listening and learning. God, you not only wants to, uh, you to talk to him, but he's talking to you. So he wants you to listen and, and hear what he is telling you to do. And those questions and those concerns that you're talking to him about, he's going to talk to you and give you those answers, just like he told, told Daniel and he's talking to Solomon. He said, Solomon, what do you want? Just ask. He, so he, you're able, Lord, I'm this and I'm going that. He already knows. 
but he still wants you to talk to him. Yet, you know your mom and your dad know you're going to be hungry, right? So they don't wait till you come to them to say, I'm hungry, before they decide to go to the store to get you something to eat. Oh, you hungry? What? Oh, man, let me run down to the store and get some groceries. No, no, no. They already know at some point in time you're going to need some cereal or you're going to need whatever it is you're eating or they're going to cook dinner. So they already prepared beforehand those things. So when you come and say, Mom, can I have, they already have it there for you. The same way God already has it all for you. But you need to still come and talk to him. And then in the work in K, in the talk, we are to keep like a... A prayer plan. Because I know y'all saying, I don't know how to talk to God. I don't know what to say. Well, get you a prayer plan. You can write it down. All right, I'm going to talk to God about this because my friend said this. I can talk to God. Make down some prayer requests. You know, maybe you have friends that have questions and you be like, I don't know. So put that down on your prayer request. Okay, my friends meet this, Lord. And then when I talk to you, I'm going to ask you about this. Oh, well, my mama, I heard my mama saying, I'm going to put that down because I need to pray for that for her. So just write it down, your prayer request. And so when you go to talk, talk to God, you won't forget. all Because we forget sometimes things that we need to talk about or pray about. So just keep your plan. Write it down. Talk to God about this. Talk to God about that. You can just write that little plan now. So fake kids, pretty teas. I got some homework for you. Parents, help me out. Let them do their homework assignment. Since we're talking about what we can say to God, I want each of you to get a piece of paper and write your name down horizontally. Write your name. I wrote my name down for you to show you. Hopefully you can see it. I have my name. Angela. So for A, I have answers. So I can talk to God about any answers that I need. So when you write your name, I want you to write a word with that initial on things you can talk to God about. In Talk to God when I need help. G, I can talk to God for guidance. E, I can talk to God when I'm excited. So, you know, you don't just have to talk to God when you need something, right? But when you're happy, when he's blessed you and you've got what you want, you can tell him, Lord, I just thank you. I'm so excited. I got this. You've blessed me with this. You can talk to him when you're excited. L, I put on their legs. I know you're like, well, I'm talking to God about my legs. But I want you to know that if something hurt you, whether it's your legs, whether it's your arms, whether it's your head, you can talk to him. Father, I, you know my legs hurt. You can, he will heal you. So you can talk to him. Whatever hurting you, you can talk to God about that. And the last one I put, angry, anger. If you're upset and you're mad because you didn't get your way, you can talk to God about that. He wants to talk to you about each and everything. Remember, nothing is too big, nothing is too small to talk to God about. So your homework assignment, take your name, write it down, and write a word for each one of the letters in your name. All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're back. <laughs> so we just have a couple minutes that I uh, want to use to talk to our teenagers. Tag, we have a quick word for you. And then we will close off this live broadcast with a word of prayer. And then we will look forward to getting together next time. So, uh, I mean, Sister Angela kind of just stole my message because we were going to talk about prayer and uh, so we don't have to go over that anymore. Okay. Just do what she said now. Um, so the last couple of weeks we were talking about Lent and how, uh, Lent was this time where, uh, people would spend, you know, 40 days kind of fasting, using this time to get closer to God. And we were talking about how, even though we're not Catholic and we don't do all the things that, uh, are taught or believed in the Catholic faith, there's one good thing that we could get from it. And so we, I was encouraging you that while you have this time off, to not just take time off. Uh, one of the great things that will set you apart in this life is that when you have an opportunity for advancement, that you will advance and not hang out. Um, there is uh, 
two ways I guess you can look at it, you know. When we have vacation time, we want to take time off and just be off and things like that. But when we're in this unexpected time off, we can try and pause our lives and, and where we are and go through three weeks and then come back and three weeks later try to pick up where we left off. Or we could take that three weeks and try and make advancements, try and make steps forward. So instead of being the normal student who takes the summer off and loses two months of information that you worked for and studied for, don't be that person. Use the time off uh, to get somewhere that you should go. So last week I was in encouraging you to spend some time every day, particularly praying and reading the Bible. And it just struck me as we were going throughout the week, wanted to, to talk to you about uh, specifically how to pray. What can you do to pray? If you don't know, you know, if, if I'm encouraging you to pray and you're like, okay, I want to do that. That makes sense. Or I believe that's what God is leading me to do, but you don't know exactly how. Just want to talk for a couple minutes about how to do that. In addition to what Sister Angela already said, which means I really don't need to say any of it. But in Philippians 4, ver Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, don't be anxious for about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. When we pray to God, we are taking an opportunity just to talk, to communicate with him. It tells us in the Old Testament that we can come together and reason with him. And so when we are praying, we can use prayer for a lot of different things or in a lot of different ways. But what we're doing essentially is talking to God. So the same way that you would talk to one of your friends, one of your family members, you can spend that time talking to God and that becomes prayer. So it says that we're not supposed to be anxious. We're not supposed to be all excited about anything, but we're supposed to go through our lives with prayer, supplication and thanksgiving. And then we make our request known unto God. So when there are things that you have that you need, you can let those requests be made known unto God. But part of your prayer is just talking to God about who you are. You remember back in the day when you had that imaginary friend, you know, do they still have imaginary friends? We still do that. I had an imaginary friend and I appreciate my imaginary friend very much. I don't think I ever gave my imaginary friend a name, but we did talk a lot. We played a lot and we had a lot of good times. So anyway, when you had your imaginary friend, you'd be like, hey, imaginary friend, you know. I'll be the cops and you be the robbers, okay? You're going to you're going to, you know, you're going to do something bad and I'm going to come and get you. I'm going to chase you around and and you know, we we have this conversation. So don't act like you don't know how to talk to someone that you can't see cuz God gave you a great, brilliant, vivid imagination so that you can have a seat, you can sit there, you can take some time and you can begin to talk with the Father. Share with him what you're thinking about. Share with him what you're concerned about. Share with him what you are thankful for. And it's very important to be thankful. We can be focused on the things that are messed up in this time uh, that our, our nation is dealing with crisis. Or we can be thankful for the great things that we have. We can be thankful. Um, a lot of people are able to work from home right now that couldn't before. And you can be thankful for that. We can be thankful that if there is anywhere in the world that you would be, you want to be in the United States when there's an outbreak of disease, you know, even apart from what we can believe God will spiritually do. So thank God that you're in the, the nation that has the best health care. Thank God that you're in the nation that has, you know, all the best of the best of the best. And so we can, you know, talk to God about all these things. And again, our goal was to take at least five minutes every day and pray. When you start that, five minutes can feel like an eternity. You will say everything you need to say and look at the clock in like 30 seconds. It's this weird thing that happens in your brain. But I want to encourage you to set that five minutes apart. Also want to encourage you to pray out loud. Okay, um, we don't talk to our friends in our mind, even our imaginary friend, we don't talk to in our mind. If you don't talk to your imaginary friend in your mind, why would you talk to God in your mind? So talk out loud. I remember particularly for me, that was like very difficult to pray out loud. I remember like I can see it. I can see me in my house with my parents gone trying to pray out loud. I was intimidated. I felt weird, uh, but I had to get over it because I wanted to pray to God. So you might feel have all these feelings that it's kind of strange or it's kind of weird. 
but pray to God using your words, using your voice, have that interaction and that relationship with him um, so that we can grow again in our relationship. Also supposed to spend some time reading the Bible. You can use the chapters that we look at, uh, particularly with our church, and you can ask your parents how to get to that. We have chapters that we look over uh, every day, one chapter in the morning, one chapter in the evening. Um, and there was another scripture that I wanted to read to you from Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. It says, when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words or for their much saying, as it says in another version. So when you pray, don't worry about sounding the way other people sound when you're praying. Praying uh, is not supposed to sound like, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You might, at some point in your life, want to pray that or, or spend that time thanking Jesus and you're thankful and so you repeat it over and over. So I'm not knocking that. But you don't need to make your prayers sound like that if that's not what you're dealing with or how you're feeling at the time. You don't have to say things repeatedly. Uh, you don't have to say, Father God, every two sentences, like, Dear Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this day, Father God. And Father God, we pray to you, Father God. And, you know, it's whatever it is that you repeat. Some people repeat amen. Some people re repeat the name of Jesus. Some people repeat whatever because that's kind of, you know, how we learn and develop. But you don't have to have your prayer sound like anyone else's prayer. And so you don't have to throw up empty words just because you don't have anything else to say. You can pray quietly. You can pray slowly. You don't have, there's not like, you don't have to meet a 500 word quota to say a prayer. You know, there's one scripture in the Bible that says Jesus wept and there are scriptures that are much longer. OK, you can have prayers that are short. You can have short sentences. Don't feel like it has to sound professional. You will develop in your prayer conversation same way you develop in your actual conversation. Right. So when you were little, you learned to say stuff one word at a time. Water, food, daddy. That was like it. Your sen all your sentences were one word. Now, me, mine, gimme. You know, that's how you learned. And then over time, you learned how to form a sentence. Daddy, will you please give me something to eat? Because you're so awesome and wonderful, because I am. So you will develop your language and your ability to pray over time. So I just want you to continue on in that. If you feel froggy, take your five minutes to eight minutes. Take your five minutes to 10 minutes. Grow in this time while you're out of school. Make it count for something so that you can grow and increase. So when you're praying, you're just having a conversation with God. With Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Always uh, have Thanksgiving as a part of your prayer. And then secondly, is that you don't have to use empty words, words you don't understand, or words that aren't meaning anything to you at the time. You don't have to include those things in your prayer. You can just pray and talk to God the way that you would talk to another. So that's it for TAG. I just want to get ready to close out our service. We are glad, excited, thankful that you've joined us uh, here through Faith Family Church. Glad you've gotten the word. If this word is, is meant something to you, please take a moment to uh, make notes so that it'll be fixed in your heart. You can share it with others so that they can also uh, know to not be afraid and have the scriptures that we went over. Uh, we're not able to do our giving. And so if you'd like to, you can look at our website and things like that. Uh, for ways to give and continue that. Um, it looks like we're going to be meeting this way next week, uh, but I'm going to pray in closing that things are going to get back to normal uh, super soon. So we would like for you to join us next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Channel is Facebook Live. The time is 1030 if you don't know what I'm talking about. And then last but not least, we have a prayer call that we normally do four times a week. Doing that also right now through Facebook Live. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. 
We would love for you to get online with us and join us as we pray. We do it all the time. Uh, this week is on Facebook Live. So we want you to join us as we pray. And let me pray uh, in closing. Father, we thank you again for opportunity to continue to worship, to continue to grow. We thank you, Father, for calming fears, for giving us the ability to cast out fear, to step in faith, and to take, take up our role as the church. We thank you, Father. I didn't look at the scripture in Numbers chapter 16, but we have that opportunity to be as Aaron was who grabbed um, the, the coal off the altar and put it in the censer, and he ran out among the people. And while the plague had started from the back of the camp of Israelites, that when he took that uh, incense and ran out there, that Aaron stood between the dead and the living. And we, the church, want to step up and stand between the the infected and those that are not infected we want to stand between what satan is trying to do in the world and and stop it that he will not be successful so we thank you father we continue to bind satan in the name of jesus who this disease belongs to uh, we call right now in the name of jesus for a steep drop in the uh the cases of covid19 uh a cessation of deaths a cause by COVID-19, and we thank you, Father, that our society, that our culture will get back to normal very quickly, very fast, that any negative predictions will come to naught because of your supernatural uh, work in our lives, and as we, your believers, stand in faith and say that Satan is not able to continue his path or reign of terror. So, Father, we give you the glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, in Jesus' name, amen. Have an excellent week. We'll see you next time.